Hello, kind viewers, and welcome to Golden Age Technology on Supreme Master Television. Today we present part one of a two-part series introducing the Venus Project, a holistic, resource-based vision of the future advocated by celebrated American inventor, designer, and futurist Jacques Fresco. I don't believe in utopia. I believe that every city can be improved continuously, that there are no final frontiers, no best car you can make, no best transportation. It will always change. The Venus Project is a comprehensive plan to create a world where humans, animals, and nature coexist peacefully. The goal is to resolve all of today's serious world issues, such as climate change and hunger, through a restructuring of global society. Mr. Fresco is confident that this enormous transformation would usher in a new age of harmony, prosperity, and cultural advancement. Implementation of the Venus Project would move us away from the current monetary-based economic system to a resource-based economy where our planet's gifts are designated as the heritage of all people. Designers and engineers would build holistic, sustainable cities using advanced technology. Mr. Fresco is considered to be a genius and visionary. He has a background in industrial design and previously worked as a consultant and researcher in the aviation industry. He once was employed by an aircraft manufacturer who asked him to work on technical issues that no one at the company was able to solve. He said, when a big plane lands and the wheels touch the ground, the rubber of the tires is worn out, and those tires are very expensive. He says, can you do anything about that? I says, I can try. So in about an hour and a half, I made a drawing of a wheel with veins in the middle of the wheel. So when the landing gear came down, the wind turned the wheel around. And when it hit the ground, it was turning. And it was easier. It didn't lose as much rubber. And after about three weeks, he said, Jock, you made more contributions in three weeks than the history of aviation. He has authored numerous books, including Designing the Future, produced and been featured in documentaries, and traveled extensively, promoting his ideas in television and radio interviews and seminars throughout the world. His dreams for the future have culminated in the Venus Project, which he began in 1975 with colleague Roxanne Meadows. The project is ongoing and headquartered at a 9-hectare research center in Florida, USA. Supreme Master Television had the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Fresco and Ms. Meadows, who both graciously shared their time to discuss the Venus Project at length. My name is Jacques Fresco. I'm the designer of the Venus Project and the resource-based economy. The Venus Project is declaring the Earth as the common heritage of all the world's people. All the resources, all the knowledge is to be shared by people. There would be no patents anymore. But all people would be taken care of. There would be no money. The Venus Project states that we have a lot of unsolved problems. That's where we have to be working, on unsolved problems. If I had anything to do with it, I would take all the soldiers, send them back to school to become problem solvers. Because we have millions of problems that are not solved. But war does not solve problems. Mr. Fresco believes that to make real progress as a global society, all cultures must work together in unity. Only then a true world community can emerge that serves the common welfare of all. To me, everybody on earth is important. And I think that all nations make contributions. And so we owe so much to so many nations, I would like to see them all join together and work on common problems, cancer, heart disease, the common problems that bother all people all over the world, to have no armies, no navies, no police, and no prisons. 
As long as you have armies, navies, police, and prisons, you are not civilized, from my point of view. Now, of course, you're not going to understand all this in one shot, but I can tell you that people are shaped by culture. But if you're brought up to believe that certain things are right and certain things are wrong, you're dealing with a fixed value system inherited from the distant past. I would say that in the future, all the races would grow up together and children would have no attitude about Japanese or Chinese or Greeks or Polish people, no attitude. Jacques Fresco was born in 1916 and grew up in New York City, USA. In terms of education, he is mostly self-taught. When young, he was fascinated by the aeronautical engineering field and would later go on to design new aviation technology, such as systems for noiseless and pollution-free aircraft and an innovative aircraft wing structural system. My background was very different. My grandfather talked to me about people coming from all over the world and bringing ideas to America, the printing press, language, religion, all these things were brought by many different people and many different cultures. And he said, Jack, if you really like the world, why don't you pledge allegiance to taking care of nature, the oceans, and all the world's people? Don't pledge allegiance to any one nation. I was about 14 and a half or 15 years old, and I left school. And uh, I used to leave home with books because my mother wouldn't understand it. And I'd go to the library or the museums or the Science and Industry Museum in New York and I'd read what I wanted to read. And I'd listen to all points of view of different people. His study of the world, politics, and societies has led Jacques Fresco to believe that the global monetary system is the root cause of many of the urgent issues facing our planet today, and the solution is a shift to a resource-based economy. This principle is at the heart of Mr. Fresco's philosophy and of the Venus Project. I see a resource-based economy. By resource-based, I mean, instead of money, Jesus chased the money changers out of the temple. And they say to me, without money, people would lose their incentive. Well, that's another myth that's perpetuated. Because what they don't understand is Gandhi did what he did, not for money. Nobody gave Gandhi 2000 or $100,000 to work for the freedom of India. He did it because he believed in it. Martin Luther King marched not for money. He walked into the South because he believed in what he was doing. I believe when people believe in what they're doing and they work for the betterment of society, they had many less human problems. How does a resource-based economy differ from a monetary-based economy? The Venus Project differs from the monetary system in many, many ways. All people in the Venus Project will have access to the necessities of life without a price tag. All the world's people will have the same access to all of the necessities of life. The schools will be different. They will teach children that all people require the same thing. Clean air, clean water, nutritious food, and a relevant education. The earth belongs to everybody. The society of the future will provide for all human needs. The project's cities would be built in a circular fashion to maximize land and energy efficiency with research and learning facilities located in the city's core. Designated access centers would provide goods and services to citizens and ample parks and green spaces would surround the residential districts. If you can get the picture of this city you'll notice that it's circular. The reason for that 
is we design one-eighth of the system. By designing one-eighth of the system, repeating it makes it much less expensive. To design standardized major research centers in the middle, those are all research centers, one of the centers might be education, the other might be agriculture. Another one of the centers might be production of goods and services. So you have everything that that city needs. All the rooftops are photovoltaic. They generate electricity. There is nothing in that city that depends on outside import. Now the city is designed as a self-sufficient, self-carrying institution. The city has a built-in transportation. You get in and you dial where you want to go or verbalize. You want to go to the art center, music center, school, you get on a conveyor, it'll take you anywhere in the city in less than 20 minutes. Instead of having automobiles in the city, with each person driving a car, you're going to have accidents. You're going to endanger population. So we have no automobiles in the city. Between cities, if you want to travel from one city to another city, we have a monorail. So when you get to the city, it lets you off in the middle of the next radial system, which may be the outer perimeter. And there's a train that takes you all around the city and lets you off at the different radials. And you take another unit in and there's an elevator. Some of the units that transport you move up, down, around, and sideways. So you don't have to get out and get on to another transport unit. The transport units themselves will go up the building with 40 people in it and take them to their working area. The middle of the city has these little buildings all around it. The eight little buildings around the little domes are access centers where you can access anything that you have need for. After you access a camera, you take all the pictures, you return the camera to the camera center. You can keep it for a month or longer. But when you're through, you return it to the camera center so other people can have the use. When you're finished with a camera, you leave it in your, your office for three or four days or a week. It could be used all the time. You got schools, dental care, medical care, access to goods and services, everything that the community needs. And every district is the same distance from the access center. And all waste is recycled under the roadways. And all delivery to the city is made by delivery systems under the roadways, so it doesn't obstruct traffic. And the, the train that takes you around the city is 30 feet off the ground. If, like if you go to France or England, you see buses at street level and streetcars, and they have to stop at every corner because there's other traffic going the other way. 30 feet off the ground, they don't have to stop. They just let you off where you're going. The Venus Project envisions that through advanced technology, all buildings will be constructed to be in harmony with the environment and there will be clean, quiet, and safe neighborhoods. City residents will be able to live happy, well-adjusted lives, free from the noise and stresses found in today's cities. At the Venus Project, they do work in surveys and try to find out the easiest, least energy expenditure me method of building a city that provides for human needs. It must provide for their health. It must keep the air clean with electrostatic air filters so that you don't breathe dust or anything else. No industry will make any noise in the future. There are systems of generating wave fronts of sound and jamming noise. So you can walk by a factory of the future and not hear a thing. In the future, most things will be soundproof.
The Venus Project's staff and volunteers are currently working towards making Jacques Fresco's vision of a sustainable, holistic society through high-level engineering and technology a reality by spreading his ideas across the globe. Our appreciation goes to you, Mr. Fresco, for speaking to us about your plans to help constructively transform our world. For more information on the Venus Project and to see available books, DVDs, and CDs by Mr. Fresco, please visit www.thevenusproject.com. Download a free ebook version of Jacques Fresco's Designing the Future in various languages at the same website. Hello, happy viewers, and welcome to Golden Age Technology on Supreme Master Television. Today, we present the conclusion of a two-part series introducing The Venus Project, a holistic, resource-based vision of the future advocated by celebrated American inventor, designer, and futurist Jacques Fresco. Mr. Fresco was born in 1916 and grew up in New York City, USA. He has a background in industrial design and previously worked as a consultant and researcher in the aviation industry. He has authored numerous books, including Designing the Future, produced and been featured in documentaries and traveled extensively, promoting his ideas in television and radio interviews and seminars throughout the world. The Venus Project is a comprehensive plan to create a world where humans, animals, and nature coexist peacefully. The goal is to resolve all of today's serious world issues, such as climate change and hunger, through a restructuring of global society. Mr. Fresco is confident that this enormous transformation would usher in a new age of harmony, prosperity, and cultural advancement. Implementation of the Venus Project would move us away from the current monetary-based economic system to a resource-based economy where our planet's gifts are designated as the heritage of all people. Designers and engineers would build holistic, sustainable cities using advanced technology. We have chapters all over the world of the Venus Project. We encourage you to look at our website. We have the Venus Project design teams where we have over 1,600 people who have signed up so far. We're going to be working on um, more detailed blueprints for, for our city designs. We have a Corsan project where in one of Jacques old books he talks about Corsan, the centralized computer which um, is a database and organizes technically everything on a global basis within a resource-based economy. Under the Venus Project's plan, how is energy generated for our cities? energy for the city of the future, photovoltaic on rooftops. There will also be within the structure itself a composite material and when the sun's out and the structure moves they'll be called pressure transducers. They generate electricity by expansion and contraction. So all the roadways, all the rooftops are not only photovoltaic but they're heat concentrators. In regions where you have natural volcanic energy you use the heat of volcanoes to boil water and turn turbines and there's enough volcanic energy to propel the earth for thousands of years. Just that alone if we develop it harnessing the Gulf Stream. These waters move. Under the ocean there are cold water streams, there are hot water streams moving in different directions. We can harness them by putting a turbine in there. There are thousands of different ways of generating electricity. You don't need oil or gasoline or coal. These are filthy ways. There's very little waste in the future. Today we manufacture things to wear out and break down. So you have piles of television sets, computers, cell phones in the junkyard. Piles of it. In the future we design things to last. So you can just change a part very easily by plugging it in. And pull out the transistor, put it in another one. It'll blink and tell you where the problem is. Your cell phone will repair itself when it can. In other words, the way a machine repairs itself, it has, say, three 
resistors or transistors and when one fails the other one rotates it, plugs in. I think machines can do almost anything man can do except feel. Mr. Fresco has proposed innovative solutions to many of the environmental issues facing the world, such as the global shortage of clean potable water. When it rains, we harness the water. We direct the water to storage basins. Instead of floods, we build canals all across the world in different countries. And those canals terminate the flood waters into strip mining where we dug big holes in the earth we left these ugly places all over the world in the future we will store flood waters there to be used at a later date we don't pour chlorine in the water do you know that most embalming fluids are in all the reservoirs of all the big cities you can't put embalming fluid in dead people and not know that it doesn't go down into the ground and contaminate the water table when you spray poisons on plants it's very hard to wash those poisons off because they do go inside the food you eat. So everybody is be slowly poisoning with artificial coloring, artificial taste, artificial flavoring. Nothing will be artificial. Everything in the future will be organically grown. The Venus Project calls for building cities in the sea, which would include research and learning centers dedicated to bettering the ecological conditions in our oceans. We do have cities in the sea of many different designs. The purpose of the city in the sea is a, is a university really at sea. It's a trained marine sciences, marine biologists, and what they do is they restore the reefs, restore the damage. Well, the cities in the sea have units out away from the city. It's called a wedge. It's made of concrete and it's got cells in it. And the concrete is towed out and mounted about a mile in front of an island. So if the tsunami occurs, the waves are parted a mile out, the heavy seas, you understand? That's how we deal with tsunamis. Earthquakes are generally based upon pressures in the earth that build up over time. We will have sensors. We can dig holes six miles deep today with mining equipment. We could put sensors deep in the earth that can let us know well in advance when the pressure build up is occurring. How much will it cost? We don't have that problem in the future. Do we have the resources to do? Yes, we do. And that's all that counts. The Venus Project's headquarters is located in a pristine area of South Central Florida, USA, on a nine hectare parcel of land. The site features a research center and a number of other buildings designed by Mr. Fresco and Ms. Meadows. Within the structures are housed many models, illustrations, blueprints, and exhibits related to the Venus Project. The center runs informational workshops for the public where participants are able to discuss Jacques Fresco's ideas face to face with him. There will be many different types of buildings in the future. Different people with different interests will want to select different types of buildings. But in most instances, most of the buildings are curvilinear. They're, they have curves or bent lines, and that makes the building much stronger and uses far less material. So there would be lots of deck space on buildings so that people can relax. As you notice all the deck space on these buildings, but people will pick a building that suits their profession and their interests. So the buildings will vary depending on the interests of the occupant. Other than that, there'd be a very wide selection of what buildings people can live in. All the lines are curved, which makes the building much stronger. And the boats and helicopter is there for your use. In the future, I don't think people will want to own anything anymore. 
everything is there for their use but you don't own anything you live in the building as long as you like you can travel any place you want to travel and then if you come over here this may be a model of an art center in the future where artist materials you have access to any material you want there's no fee anymore and so what you see here is different buildings and different mechanisms that serve a different purpose. This represents joint venture of all the world's people going out into space together and using it for the benefit of everyone. Now if you come over here, you see these are exhibition buildings. Some of them we built for China originally. And uh, this represents a rooftop landing area. And the rooftop gardens will be on all buildings in the future. All of the larger buildings will have rooftop gardens or solar generators as part of the roof. Jacques Fresco sees all repetitive tasks being performed by automated machinery in the future, enabling people to have more free time to explore their areas of interest and help advance society. This is the way we produce buildings in the future. This is a machine that has a die placed in this area and then it ex squeezes the buildings out like that and then a laser beam cuts them. And this machine picks the building off and transfers it to this machine. And this machine, if I can change my position, if you can see this, this machine shoves the building onto that ramp. It shoves it on like that. And once it gets there, the memory metals lock and keep it in place. The buildings will be put up in dry dock. That means like ships are built. Then the machine that looks like this will travel along putting in the windows and everything. And then when the buildings are finished, say you got like 10 buildings finished in here, then we flood it with water and the buildings are built on a float and we float the building to the location. Then we use water jets under the building. So we slip the building in place, right like that. Instead of bringing building material out there and cut it up and make it, we make them all in dry dock and we move them on water because on water you can move heavy for freight and it doesn't have to be fast. And this machine lowers this building over the canal and the water evaporates by the sun and condenses on the inside and you get drinking water, desalinization, without expenditure of energy using the sun. After we fill this with salt water, it's for irrigation and flood control. So all this water is directed towards the water storage basins, so you don't have flooding. Mr. Fresco sees a future where computer systems will monitor the world's environment and provide timely, accurate information on events that need our immediate attention. This represents the government of the future. It would be cybernated. That means that computers will monitor farm production, uh, harvest the crop, plant the seeds, and m m maintain their um, packaging and everything else. Whereas these various image screens will give you an image of any part of the earth. This represents a hurricane. So you can see on these screens any area on Earth from 3,000 miles out in space you can photograph plant diseases. They show up as red. If you photograph the Amazon jungle you'll see a dark red area which means those plants are ill or sick. And so you can maintain with a satellite as the Earth rotates under the satellite you'll be able to show people everything on earth 
and every airplane in the air and every ship at sea. When you ask the computer how many planes are there in the air at this instant, it'll tell you exactly. It'll tell you 10,408, 9, 10, and you'll be in touch with every area of the earth by these screens. There is no government in the future. The government is maintained electronically, but it's programmed to monitor food transportation, monitor the earth, hurricanes, tsunamis, and tell people, warning them of any problems. So everyone will have this, which gives them information about the earth. Until we learn to control the Sami's and the weather, which I believe man will eventually be able to do, man will eventually be able to control hurricanes, the weather, and most disasters.